Well, the time has finally come. It's a clear Friday night. I'm going to bring this setup outside finally and test it out. Expectations are, you know, where they should be right now. Nothing too crazy. I'm gonna try it out for visual, try to take some images with it, but really excited to finally test out the Celestron Edge HD11. Okay, before I bring this outside, just real quick, I wanted to go over some of the thoughts I've been having about this system. I'm excited to use it, but uh, there's gonna be some trial and error and some experimenting. So as you can see, I've got a dedicated astronomy camera at the end of the tube right now, using a Star Arizona ad adapter to reach the proper back focus. But right now, as it stands, this system is gonna be shooting at F10 and 2800 millimeters. I mean, that sounds great, the 2800 millimeters, that's so deep, perfect for galaxy season, but man, that's gonna be challenging in a number of ways. Without auto guiding, I can't see going past 30 seconds without some sort of star trailing, even with a just killer polar alignment. Also finding targets, the star alignment process, all that's gonna be very tough when you're so deep like that at almost 3000 millimeters. So what I'm thinking is the Celestron focal reducer, the 0.7, Focal reducer brings it down to F7 from F10 and then down to about 1900 millimeter focal length. So that's really attractive for me because I would always trade focal length for a lower F stop. So it actually captures images in half the time at F7, if you can believe that. So F10 is not an aperture I'm used to shooting in. So F7 sounds a lot better to me. And my goodness, shooting at nearly 2,000 millimeters, that should be enough reach. So I really think that that's gonna be the configuration I use most uh, in terms of using the full reach of this telescope. And then the other side of things is the Hyperstar system, which I might use even more. That's similar to the RASA, where you're gonna be shooting at F2, but a much wider field of view. So some decisions to make here. Maybe I'll just try it with a DSLR on the back here, just to keep things simple right off the bat, especially if I'm shooting at F10 and that 2800 millimeters, get that wider frame, crank the ISO, hopefully see something. I'm thinking I'm gonna start with a DSLR. So. I don't know, let me know what you guys think, owners of the Edge HD 11 or 8 or 9.25, what you went through with this process. That's just kind of where my head's at now and I thought it was useful to share that. It is really windy out here, which is no good for both astrophotography and filming. Hopefully this mic is working okay. So if you didn't notice here, I am gonna try auto guiding and I've got this little 50 millimeter guide scope, the William Optics, uh, just slid into the finder scope rack. So um, it's not perfect. I mean, it's a little wiggly. This, I don't believe that this bracket was designed for a guide scope. I think I'd be better off mounting another uh, bracket, but I'll try this for now. And obviously there's a major, mismatch. So this is a 50 millimeter guide scope shooting at probably 200 millimeter focal length. And then we've got almost 3000 focal length for the scope. So I don't know how well that's going to work. We'll try that out just because it's something I have immediately, but I think uh, an off axis guider would be a better solution for this setup. And just from the images I've seen online, that's more what I see with this setup as an off axis guider. Um, I think I will try it with a dedicated astronomy camera rather than the DSLR. Um, just to give it a shot, it's the right spacing, so I like that it's all ready to go. This is the ASI 294MC Pro, which you've seen me use a lot, so uh, we'll see how that goes, but hopefully this wind dies down. Here is a quick look at everything as it's set up on the Edge HD11. You can see the pocket power box there, that's there. I don't have a big dew shield yet for this scope, so hopefully that helps even a little bit and it's very convenient, it just rides up top like that. You can see the Pole Master and the uh, Star Arizona adapter at the front here. So I need that because there's no polar alignment scope on the CGXL. So that works well. I've done this before uh, on the RASA, I used it like this. L bracket there, so that works great. So that's for polar alignment. 
And then moving down, I've just got my little USB hub here for, because I've got a lot going on. The camera, the guide camera, and right now the pole master is plugged into there. Looking a little messy, but uh, bear with me. Here is the ASI 294 MC Pro camera. As you can see, I've got my guide cable here, the ST4 cable kind of wrapped around the camera. And then it's actually plugs in on the declination axis. So it's uh, moving with it. So a very short cable out of the way. Ideally, I would have that PC connection to do pulse guiding, but that's just not set up on this uh, imaging laptop yet. I still need to install some software. Speaking of software, this is my new imaging laptop outside. It was my regular daytime work computer, um, but it's been retired and is now being used for astrophotography. So I've loaded it up with all the necessary tools there in the old bucket format. So that's how things are looking right now. And uh, man, it is cold and even worse windy out here. So it should be fun to see what I can do with this and get some of the first challenges out of the way. As you can probably tell, it's the following day now. I had a bit of a rough night with this rig, which was to be expected. So it's amazing how managing your expectations can change the way you look at a night of imaging, even if it's potentially frustrating, you don't get what you want. Uh, if you've learned a few new things, it's actually a positive experience. And that's what happened last night. Surprise, surprise, I couldn't use my old tried and true method of using a star alignment process to align the telescope mount. This worked for focal lengths of 300, 400, 500 millimeter focal length, even my 1000 millimeter giant refractor. That, I can use that no problem. One star alignment, you know, it's good enough to find these small targets. Not the case when you triple that focal length to almost 3,000 millimeters. I attached a small finder scope to try and help me with the alignment process. It just wasn't working. I was just getting lost in space. So there's a few things that you can do to get around that. Plate solving is a big one, obviously, but also this telescope has the, uh, the Celestron Star Sense Auto Align system, and I'm really curious about that. As well, I now have the PWI software from Celestron installed on my computer. So that has its own kind of planetarium. You can align them out that way and point where you want to go in the sky. So that's very interesting and I like it so far. It was really quick and easy to set up. So just connected to the mount using the PC connection on the CGXL. The long story short is that when you get to this focal length of 2,800 millimeters, get into that realm, the star alignment is just not an option. It's just too, too far, too deep. You get lost too easily. So I guess I, you know, I, I expected this and, and I got it. This is what I deserve for uh, making fun of uh, people that plate solve and say that I just use the hand controller because uh, it's just not a good situation for a setup like this. I feel good about it. I've gotten a little bit farther. The guiding looked great despite the, uh, you know, the mismatch and focal length. I think this guiding system is going to work. I was taking three minute images that were nice and sharp through uh, the auto guiding system. Just nice to maneuver this telescope around and kind of focus it. Things are looking good. No images yet to share, but uh, it was a positive experience and I'm excited to keep moving forward. Thank you. 